friends plead guilty. From the back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I have been with women from around the world. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 800 Talk. 1 800 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. I got an email for a listener. It's, it's so too long and rambling for me to read on the air. I had uh, the run on sentences, the misspellings, the mangled grammar. Made it very difficult to share with you verbatim. So I've had to kind of uh, plow my way through the verbiage and kind of uh, cull what was valuable in here. Let me just say I got an email from a male listener who has got an ongoing problem with his girlfriend. And here is the problem. His girlfriend is on a constant mission to be recognized by his friends and family. And what he says he means by that is she is constantly concerned about little things like that people know she's his girlfriend, that people know her name, and she is constantly making sure that her name is front and center with as many people as possible. For example... And how many of you have been through this one, okay? These two live together. <laughs> Why, I don't know. And she has been beating the crap out of it. By the way, he has one of those generic answering machine messages. You know, it says something like, the number you called, 3102. Eight, six, five. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, there's no one there right now. Leave a message. Beep. And uh, she is convinced. That not only is she convinced that he's leaving it generic so that any of the women he used to date would continue to leave messages. She wants a message on there that says, you know, like, hi, this is Jennifer. Steve and I are in here right now. Like, She wants to take over his voicemail and put her name on it so everybody will know the two of them are together. She also gets upset because his friends don't seem to remember her name. You know, for example, there's been more than one occasion when she has been introduced to somebody he knows, and then later on the person can't remember her name. And so what she does is she she pr proceeds to take it out on him. What is it with your friend not remembering who I am? He already met me. Why does he know my name? Does he know you have a girlfriend? Does he know you're my you're my boyfriend? Does he know don't you talk about me? Don't you tell your friends about me? Oh, kill me now. Yikes. So it's an ongoing argument. Now, you know me. I have a zero-tolerance policy for this crap. Any broad star of this would mean she'd get drop-kicked right out the front door, and that would be it. But as you know, most people uh, will wait until the absolute bitter end. They will not cut their losses. This is clearly a red flag. It's clearly trouble. Here's another one. Now, I, let me give you this an example of something that used to happen to me. I meet lots of people. How many listeners have met me at some time or another, right? 
You may have met me at a listener event. You may have met me at a sporting event anywhere around Los Angeles or Dallas or Seattle or Portland or any number of other places where the show has been broadcast. Maybe you met me. I don't remember your name because I meet hundreds of people every week. Hundreds of people. So it's very difficult for me when I'm introduced to somebody. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Joel Shapiro. This is my wife, Marlene. Marlene and Joel. Tom Ligas. Tom Ligas, Marlene and Joel Shapiro. Uh, this is uh, the Dr. Greenberg over here. Uh, this is uh, uh, Dr. Richard Greenberg, and this is his wife, Letty Greenberg. And uh, then over here, you got, you, you're in a room, and these people are all introducing themselves to you. Some of them giving you cards. By the way, this is another thing. I come home from parties with a shirt pocket full of cards. But if you ask me to, to name those people in a lineup, if I saw them like l lined up against the wall and I was asked to match the business card to the person, I couldn't do it. So here's what happens. I go to a party with a female. And I will say to the female the following. I will say what I just told you. You know, in my profession, I meet lots of people. And they're all going to act like they know me or like I know them because each one of them thought our meeting was somehow memorable or special. But in reality, it can't possibly be that memorable since I meet hundreds of people every week. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I, I've done this with more women than I care to remember. Here's the deal. If I don't introduce you to somebody, it means not that I'm trying to hide you, but that I don't remember the name of the person we're meeting. You will think that I know them because they're going to say, Tom, remember me? We saw each other that time in, 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 in San Diego, remember? And it's going to sound very convincing that I would know who that person is, but I don't. So rather than getting insulted when I don't introduce you, if someone introduces themselves to me and I don't introduce myself, do me a favor. Stick your hand out and say, I'm Jennifer, what's your name? We've never met. Then when I hear him say his name to you, Jennifer, then I will know who that is I'm talking to. He thinks I know his name, but I don't. So not only am I not being rude to you by not introducing you, you could help me. By introducing yourself to the person so I can hear him say his name. Now, I will say I've been with a couple of cool chicks who understand what I'm saying. And then they perform admirably, and they actually help me in public. But most women are attention whores and looking for any reason to be insulted or angry or not to have sex with you on a given night. So I can't tell you how many times I go to a party and a guy says, Hey, Todd, good to see you again. I say, Hey, how are you? Who is this guy? That's what I'm thinking to myself. Who is this guy? I don't recognize this guy. Who is he? I wish he'd say his name. Is he wearing a badge or anything? Maybe he's wearing, hello, my name is... Oh. God damn, I hope he doesn't ask me to refer back to his name. I don't know his name. What's his name? Maybe, maybe my girl will ask him what his name is. God. Come on, Jennifer, introduce yourself to him. Please say hi, my name is Jennifer. Please, please. Tom, how are you? Please, please say my name is Jennifer. Hi, I don't think we've met my, my name is Jennifer. What is your, please say, please. Hi, Tom, you remember? We remember that night we had a couple of drinks. Remember that? Please say something. And instead of her saying something to the guy, she's looking at me and getting angry. Because clearly I don't want people to know she's with me, and therefore I did not introduce her to the guy whose name I can't remember. 
Now, you know, by the way, you want to know what bitches some women are? <laughs> Let me tell you what bitches some women are. Here's what they do. Jennifer. By the way, I use the name Jennifer just because it's the most common female name for women in their 20s and 30s. Jennifer. Okay. So many of them are Jennifer. Here's what some of them do. By the way, any bitch that does this, I'll never talk to her again. It's done. I think I'm in a social situation. I'm in the public relations business. I meet somebody. This person could be a listener, could be an advertiser, could be somebody at an ad agency, could be a big muckety muck in the radio business. It could be somebody I met at a convention. It could be somebody who punched me in the mouth once. I don't know who it is. So I'm hoping she's going to introduce herself to him. And I'm sitting there going, you say something, Jennifer, introduce yourself. Come on. Come on! Oh, God, what am I going to do? You remember that time we were together having drinks, right, Tom? Come on, say something. Stick your hand out, say something. And here's what she says. Tom, when are you going to introduce me to your friend? <laughs> and you know what I have to do in that situation? I have an answer for that. Here's what I say. Well, you're a big girl. You can introduce yourself. <laughs> Gary has seen me in this situation, by the way. Gary has seen this. <laughs> Women who just act like a brick, and they refuse to accept the idea that, they, that part of their responsibility, if they want to hang out with me, uh, you know, sit in the front row at the Laker game, uh, get great tables and restaurants, go to the best concerts, whatever. Part of the payback is you got to help me out in public. At least don't make me look like an idiot. And this is why I, I it just doesn't make any sense for me to be with women in public anymore because this is the thanks you get. <laughs> so the guy who's writing in says, you know, he's got a chick who's this like to the power of 10. She's constantly paranoid about the fact that that people don't know her name. She thinks it means something. She thinks it means he doesn't want people to know they're together. Have you ever been with a woman like that who thinks that you don't want people to know you're together? You don't want your friends to know you have a girlfriend. You ever have that? Oh, Jesus. So our letter writer is like at his wit's end. But, of course, the last thing you would think to do is just kick her ass the hell out, which is that, that's where I'm at in life right now. I have a zero-tolerance policy. You come to me and complain about that, and you are done. D-U-N, done. That's right. You're out the door. I will show you what, uh, you know what, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a Thomas guide. I'll show you which way to the door. Yes, page H-475. You just go right out that door. <laughs> and don't come back. No U-turns. That's right. But uh, have you ever been with a chick like this? Is this a problem? Maybe you're with a chick like this right now. The kind that is constantly, she wants her name on your voicemail. She wants her name. By the way, how about the ones who want you, the two of you to get the cute checks? You're not even, like, married or anything. Come on. Let's go to the bank. Let's get checks. You can have your name and my name and our address. Little kitty cats. We can have porpoises on there. We can proceeds go to Greenpeace. Come on. Just so the whole world will know her name. Yeah, I'm really concerned that the person at AT and T who gets the check for our seventy eight dollar phone bill is going to know that we're we're a couple. <laughs> Are you with somebody like this right now? Tom like one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like there's so much ignorance in this world, Father. And, uh, I, I, there's so much ignorance in the world. That's how I became a multi-millionaire. <laughs> if our community ever goes up five IQ points, I'm a dead man. It's the Tom Likas Show. Talking about these chicks, we're constantly concerned that 
the whole world know you're a couple. The whole world know her name. What do you think about this? It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Louis on the Tom Liga Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How you doing? Doing okay, son. Okay, I got a question. Uh, I have a similar similar situation. I've been going out with this one girl for a couple months, and the other day she pops the question. Um, you know, so what? What are we? You know, what, what? What does she? What does she think? Or what? What do I think of her? You know, and I, I know what she. What was, do you was, think of her? Yeah, as 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 far as like, uh, you know, um, do I consider her her my girlfriend? You know, that's that's what she's trying to get at, right? No, but what was the exact phrasing? Uh, she goes, well, um, what what do you, what do you think um, of me? You know, what what, what am I to you? That's what you know, am that's, I to you? Right. Well, now you see the the, the true answer, Louis. Uh-huh. Yes. And may, did it cross your mind at all? The true answer the, is a two-word response. The last word is dumpster. What was that? I said what you were really thinking, uh, even yeah. if you didn't say it. The, the true answer is a two-word response. The second word is dumpster. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking that, weren't you? Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what did you tell her? <laughs> Well, I I I, I kind of you know uh, dodged around you know the answer. I didn't I didn't you know exactly give her give her one. You know I was like, well, we're you know we've been going out. You know we're we're uh, you know just your uh, a special friend. You know <laughs> a special uh, lady friend. That's, yes, that's what, that's what my and and uh, she didn't really like that answer. You know <laughs> that wasn't the answer she wanted. No, it wasn't. Yeah, I, I know the answer she wanted me to tell that you know that, that she was my. My, uh, you know, my girlfriend, and you know, she, you know, I haven't, I haven't brought her around the the, 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 the family yet, you know. But do you, you know, know, I once answered that question. I once said to a woman, What's "You, that? you know exactly what you are," <laughs> I, and I think it's great. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'm the master of the non-answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell her that next time she the yes. question pops up. You know exactly what you are. Right. Okay. That is, uh, you mean nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the call. What eight hundred five eight hundred Tom? That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Aram on the Tom Liga show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? Doing okay. Long time, first time, man. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, my ex. The reason why I dumped her is because that was what exactly she did. Okay, what she did was, first of all, we lived together. I know that was against your rules. So I made the mistake and had her move into my house. Um, about six months into the little thing, she wanted her name on the voicemail. I know it may sound innocent to some guys, but all it's announcing is, hey, so-and-so and so-and-so live here, which automatically takes you off the market. So all she wanted was put her name on the voicemail, and I said no which created this humongous argument, which we, I mean, for like a week, we were yelling back and forth at each other. Then she wanted joint mail, or she wanted her name on everything that came to our house. (laughs) I'm telling you, man, it's crazy. I mean, like, this girl was not happy with anything. I was like, do you pay the mortgage? And she's like, no. I was like, then you don't get mail here. I was like, get a post office box, get whatever you want. But you don't get mail here because you know what? She's trying to put her foot in. You don't want the people at Edison knowing you have a girlfriend. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, all I can tell all your listeners is as soon as a woman even wants her name on your answering machine or mail sent to the house, that's it. You're stuck. Better dump her. Actually, dump the bitch. Get yeah, you have to way. dump her at that point. Yeah, you got to get rid of her, man, because all she's going to do is lock you down and you're set. That's it. Yeah. Well, you know, and or else you could try the other response by saying, great, I want my name on your MySpace page with my photograph. <laughs> and where it says status, I wanted to say in a relationship. <laughs> and then uh, I also want my, my name on your cellular telephone voicemail. <laughs> this, this, this is Aram's girlfriend, Jennifer. That's I'm hard. not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is so true, man. I can't believe, you know. These people that even succumb to all this pressure of what women want and what women get, what do we get out of it? You know what I mean? All we want is sex, and even then they try to ration that off. 
You know what I mean? So any guy who's in that situation, you know, get rid of her because all she's going to do, just be single for the rest of your life. Sleep with as many women as you can, and that's it. You're over it. You know? That's what I do. That's all you need to do, man. Tom, you know what? You're the man, and I wish more and more people listened to you, seriously. Because after I broke up with her, I started listening to you, and my life has changed 150%. I love that. You know, I mean, can you take me out Kobe style, man? Because the Lakers are going to be in the playoffs. Take me out Kobe style. Here you go, Aram. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. one 800 800 tob That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jeff. What's up, brother? Happy Monday. And the same to you. Hey, yeah, so I was just saying, man, I I, uh, I produce fashion shows, okay? So I'm always, I'm in a social setting, and I get these girls to be my arm candy for the night, and I tell them, I'm like, okay, this is your job for tonight. Well, these randoms come up to me. I need for you to introduce yourself first so we can do it. And half the night time, they don't, they don't even apply to their job. It's just, it's ridiculous. They, just, they, they, want, they want that, you know, to be introduced by, you know, the man. And uh, it just doesn't happen. It's just ridiculous. They just want to get their name out there. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, your, your instance, where how you're at, it's just, you must be bombarded with people. And, but oh. you, would, you wouldn't really have to do it in, you know, your normal bars. They do it. But when you're at a nice function, you know, where you... You could have a you know a president of some company. You you want to you know uh, you know have that girl there. Well, I, that is I got to tell you something. That is why I have stopped bringing women to business events. Oh, I just don't do it anymore. Because first of all, the days when you have to bring a wife or a corporate girlfriend with you, uh, for, at least in my business, are over. Mm. So now I go by myself, and that way I control the situation, and it's all about control. You know, I guess you just gotta be up front with them and say, "Hey, sorry, you know, I uh, totally forgot your name," and and uh, I guess that they'll be able to respect that. You've got to say, "This is business. Yeah. It's all about business. You're not in my business. You're not probably not going to be interested in my business. <laughs> so I'm going to do this myself, and I'll call you when I'm done." Oh, hey, I got this other thing too with your uh, forty dollar rule. So I got this nice little uh, faux restaurant I go to, and it, I can get away with fourteen dollars. For two, for two, for dinner, and I always go. All right, babe, I'll uh, I'll take care of dinner, and you care for you take care of movie, which always comes to be about you know twenty one bucks or something out of their pocket, and I get my <laughs> I get my fourteen dollars. Love that. Hey, uh, wait, let's do let's do a fashion show in uh, in Costa Mesa, in Orange County. I'll get a nice lingerie fashion show and size the booze and do all that goodness. <laughs> wait, how can you say no to something like that? <laughs> I totally agree. And then how about I'll give you like what fifty percent of the door? You make millions. <laughs> well, not really. In millions, I mean maybe a couple thousand. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> Jeff, hey, thank can, you. Hey, can you take me out uh, DFP style? DFP? Yeah. Now that is a, a beer can opening up, someone throwing up another beer can opening up, and the Mexican sound. Can you do that? Uh, I guess we can. <laughs> We don't have vomit? Hmm. That kind of throws a wrench in it. All right, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Andre, oh, this sounds bad. Andre on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you doing today? Great. I'm doing great myself, too. Now, check this out, Tom. I got a friend. Well, they're a couple. First of all, to start off with, they work together. I met them at work. And not only that, I became good friends with them. And, you know, I'm more friends with the female. And, you know, she she's pretty cool and everything. And um, I go to, uh, we go out sometimes to eat. They, got, they just created this MySpace together. And they wanted me to add them onto my MySpace friend. Hell no. I said, hell no. Screw with that. I'm not adding them to my MySpace on that. And not only that, they just got a phone, uh, two phones, a cell phone and a house phone. 
they both have the same they they're both on the same line and you could tell the guy's like doesn't want doesn't want to even be on the voicemail but uh. she's like she forces him no th- it gets worse every time he tries to put in his word like where he wants to go out and eat and everything she shuts him up and bitches and screams at him i mean i feel bad for the man as a man like she she just shuts him up right away <laughs> and um and you know she's the one who got him the job i guess they want she's a jealous type and she wants him to um, work with, work together, be together with them. They're together 24-7. You can tell the guy's fed up. When he goes to a ball game, he just joined this ball game with my brother-in-law. She goes with him. She's the only female right there. Uh-huh. That goes every weekend. I mean, this girl's like the jealous type. She's, she does not leave him alone for one second. She once left him alone with my brother-in-law to go golfing. She kept blowing up my brother's law phone like every 20 minutes. Unbelievable. Yes, unbelievable. Total bitch. <laughs> Wow. I hope she's not listening. But he's a complete right pussy. What was that? He's a complete pussy. He, yeah, he's a pussy. It looks like she's the man of the relationship. Not only that, I mean, this guy's like, like he only has, he was telling me about his finances. He only has like $800 death. And this woman has like a $3,500 death. And they're of about course. to get married. And how, how old is he, by the way? Oh, he's only 23. There we 24. go. Yeah. 24. Yep. No, 23. He, and she's like 22. Meow. Yes, me meow. And they've been together for six years. And he's the type that, like, he's afraid to, like, um, you know, dump her. He's afraid to dump her and, like, move on. I mean, he's afraid that he won't get hook up with anyone. He'll never get laid again. Oh, no. That's that's it for him. He's he's trapped. He's inside a box. There's no way out. Unbelievable. Yes. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you, Tom, for all the advice you've given me. Um, I've been rehabilit- rehabilitating myself into your show because I stopped listening for a while. And you know what? When I stopped listening, I wasn't getting enough tail like I used to. But now I've been, you know, left and right getting more ass in the toilet seat, like you said. Andre, I am so proud of you. Thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom Are you involved with a bitch, the kind who uh, insists that you put her name on the voicemail or get checks with her name on them? I gets insulted if everybody doesn't know her name and you don't introduce her to all the people you meet. I want to hear that story. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just started listening to you yesterday, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. All right. Are you involved with a woman who insists that her name be on everything, that everybody knows her name, knows you have a girlfriend? A letter writer wrote in about just this problem, and yet he's still with her. Should have dumped her ass. She lives with him. Oh, God. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rigo on the Tom Liger Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Um, this is my first time calling. Yeah. Um, I'm a long-time listener, and I just um, was listening to your show, and I was with a relationship with a girl nine, like nine months ago, and she totally, you know, turned me against my family. She wanted to join that account, and I was blinded because I loved this girl a lot. And I no, you loved anything. having sex with her a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, that was true. Right. Yeah. Um, you, but, didn't, you, it, you didn't even care if you loved her or not. It was the best sex you ever had. Yes, yes. And so you were a little boy. You did whatever she said. Yes, I was whipped, but I got out of it. I mean. How? Did they have to send you to, like, a uh, deprogrammer? Huh? Do they have to send you to a deprogrammer? Deprogrammer? Yes. <laughs> you know, like they use for cults? Uh huh. Yeah. You don't know what that is, do you? No. <laughs> look it up. Yeah, looking up, yeah. Looking but, up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um. Uh huh. This girl had me totally 
Well, I did. I turned against my parents. Everybody told me that bitch. You know, you get you, sh- you should jump, dump her. You know, I turned against my best friend, and I was like, you know what? This I'm I'm this is it. I mean, my bank account was like bad. You know, so I said, you know what? I had to dump that bitch. You know. And did you? I did. And how did that bitch react? Oh, she didn't like it. She's like, you don't love me no more, or. She's like, she kept on trying calling me. I was like, whoa, you know, you know, get over it. You know, you just want to call me for one more thing. You know, you just want my money. Basically it, you know. And what did she say to that? She's like, whoa. Um, she just let it, let it go. But she keeps on, you know, she's like a stalker. Like, I, I totally, I went with my friend to a nightclub and my we were like gonna go have a. We turned. Hey, watch your around. mouth. We're on the air. Huh? Watch your mouth. We're on the air. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Tom. Um, but yeah. So I saw her and I turned back around and went somewhere else because, I mean, this person is totally can't get over me. You know. Ah, you must have been a real stud. Must have been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been a little slice of heaven here, Rigo. Thank you. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Dan on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Well, I heard your thing on the radio. I'm not much of a recent, li- I'm a pretty recent listener to the show. And uh, what you asked about asking for guys who were with the bitch and dumped her. Yeah. I was with this girl for five years, and uh, name on everything. I'm involved. She's with me, et cetera, et cetera. The, the sick part of it is that, you know, and, and to be true, I understand your 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 uh, your common theme about <clears throat> love them and leave them, et cetera, et cetera. Do what feels uh, basically have a good time. I had an ulterior motive in that I wanted a family. I wanted children. Um, and she seemed like, at the time, a per, a, a, the right person to do, to, to do that with. Good sense of responsibility, excellent work ethic. The sex was stellar, absolutely fantastic. But the simple problem of her self-esteem issues and her need to be involved in everything was simply unbearable. Um, at one point, right at the beginning of the relationship, in about a year and a half, we were completely out of debt. I was completely out of debt. She was down to less than $300 across every single credit card. No no car payments, no nothing. And then she wanted to quit her job. I said, that's all right, but you're going to let me run the finances. And she wouldn't do it. She'd hide stuff from me. She'd, she'd rack up debt. By the time we were done, she was triple what she'd ever been at. I was triple what I'd ever been at. Trips to places. Um, I'm going on this cruise whether you go with me or not. Um, <clears throat> things of that nature and like an absolute idiot. I followed along until, until one day she came back and, and just to give you a little, a short background, she quits her job, goes, wants to become a teacher, goes to do this, um, <clears throat> cuts her pay, her previous pay in half. Um, who was making good money, went to nothing, continued to spend money like there's no tomorrow. Uh, following, chasing, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to do these arts and crafts things. She wanted to belong for no other reason other than her self-esteem and making people like her, which they're not going to do, no matter how many times I try to tell her. And ultimately, it, the, the breakup takes longer to tell it than it took. She comes to the, into the bedroom and says, I'm never going to be out of debt. My point, well, you know, honestly, honey, we were completely out of debt. You quit your job to pursue a career that pays you half, and you continue to spend money like water. And frankly, I think that's pretty financially irresponsible. She yells at me, oh, don't talk to me about financially irresponsibility, <clears throat> because I I'd, I'd purchased a car over lunch, uh, on a, kind of on a whim, but it's not something that I hadn't been planning to do. I'd been re- doing my research, and the right deal presented itself, and I jumped at it. And my point to her, well, I'd like to point out that I can afford the things I pay I pay for. I have a good job, and frankly, honey, you're being awfully mouthy to the guy who pays for your life. She said, well, you don't have to worry about – she called my bluff. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm like, great. I want you out by the end of the year. And she says, it won't even take me that long. Two weeks later, it's over. Completely done and gone, five years, down the tubes. 
it tore me apart. And the sick part, the savage part about it, is that she uh, uh, that afternoon she was pleading with me. Can, can we just call it a separation? No, 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 we can't call it a separation. <laughs> you did this. You've done this three times. You did it to the guy you dated in high school. You dumped him for a guy who was ten years older than you because you were desperate to have someone to take care of you and watch over you. You dumped him after seven years of marriage, and then you're doing the same thing to me. Well, I know, I know. It's something wrong with me. Yes, there is something wrong with you, and it's not my responsibility to fix it. It's been two (laughs) years. I've never been happier. Um, You You do not need a replacement either. No, I don't. I don't. I'm I'm done. I'm having the best time of my life. My debt's under control again. Um, I've got more toys than God ever knew. I've got a beautiful house that I just purchased, um, and things are going great. And I just want to tell all your listeners out there that. And the thing that tell me, I, I would I would lament to random strangers. Ultimately, random strangers, friends I knew about how things are going wrong. I don't really know what's what's happening in a relationship, and total strangers would tell me. Well, hey, dude, you, you got a – are you married? No. Well, you got any kids? No. Dude, get out now. When total strangers tell me that, there is something going on. There are guys who have been there, done that, and they know exactly where that road leads. I'm sure you're right, Dan. I thank you for that call. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Nancy. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello. Yes. Um, I just want to say, can we start at the beginning of all the problems? What the hell were the men thinking letting these women move in with them in the first place? Well, I agree. I don't think men should ever let a woman move in if they can avoid it. Unless you're getting married, you you, you sacrifice your single self when you move in with somebody. Yes, but there are women even too much. There are women even when you don't move in with them would like to have a bank account together, mainly well, because. I said there are women, even when they don't move in with you, who would like to have a bank account together. Well, that's for ulterior motives. We can get checks together, honey. We can, can get a, your money, honey. We can get pictures of kittens on the checks. <laughs> you know, I've listened to your show a few times. I'm not from here, but you're pretty dead on on how women are. <laughs> I'm not going to even lie. I understand. <laughs> I'm sorry, but women, we said that they are, we're, we're not really hiding things. We're pretty good at sending the signals when we're stupid or when they're out for ulterior motives. The men just need to stop getting blindsided. The signs are all there. <laughs> well, that's what I'm here to tell about. Things that even seem obvious. Che on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom? Yeah. How are you doing, big guy? Great. Great. Tom. Because of you, I was uh, just ended a long-term relationship of seven years, and I married my high school sweetheart. Oh, you're killing me now. But let me tell you, Tom, she was the exact same way. She wanted to have the friggin' checks with the kitty cats on them. She got our last name inscribed on the check. Uh, I went out and I bought a car, and the first thing that she did was, hey, let's put both of our names on it. I came home one day to realize that from our apartment complex, because she moved into my place, she walked down to the uh, apartment manager and asked that both of our names be included on the lease. And I, for a long time, I thought thought it was normal because uh, I was in a, a new marriage. I didn't know really what to expect because it was so new to me, but I listened to you. And uh, I was influenced that I I, I was pussy whooped. I, I, I'll be the first to admit it. But now I've come to realize that the man is the person that who should be making all the rules because I'm the one who's making the majority of the money. I ended that relationship, and it's taken me a year and a half to finally get her off of my back because of the same reason. She wanted to be on everything. I have credit cards with her name on it, and as soon as we uh, got the separation process, she was going and she was just charging everything in the world, everything. I would get my bank statements and they would show charges from places I've never even been to. And here was the kicker, Tom. She got her car repossessed. I, I could have told you all this stuff. And in fact, I probably did. But did you pay attention? No, you did not. The Tom Likas Show.